Hello, Mr. Cheryl Landers. This is Mr. Ramadan from the science yeah. department. Today, I'm going to show you a few of the creepy crawlies that we have in science. Uh, we're going to start with a few of the live specimens, and then we're going to move on to some specimens we have in jars. Right, the first specimen I'm going to show you is a tarantula. It's called a salmon pink goliath. Its Latin name is Lassiodora paribana, and it's found in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil. Uh, it's the largest growing species of tarantula in the world, and it will ascertain a um, leg span of about 12 inches. It's pretty big, it'll probably be the size of a clock. Um, the reason why it's called a salmon pink is because it has beautiful little pink hairs at the back of its abdomen. I'll try and give it feeding to see if it actually takes the thing. Mr. Ramadan's going to put a locust into the tank. Now these are arachnids. They're part of the spider family. Mm -hmm. um, arachnids include spiders, mites and scorpions. They have two major body parts. The uh, cephalophorax, the head part, and the abdomen, and they have four pairs of jointed legs. So they include, as I said, spiders, scorpions, and mites, the arachnids. Uh, thankfully, this spider here isn't so venomous that it's deadly, but it does contain a small amount of venom in order to kill its prey. It's an ambush predator, so it'll wait for a locust to walk past, and it'll grab the locust, inject its venom, uh, the, the venom acts as a poison to kill the, the locust or whatever the prey item is and it also acts as um, like a, a chemical that breaks down all the organs inside of that insect and then the, the spider will then drink the organs like a soup, okay, using its equipment that it has. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and entice her out of her tank, just very gently brush against her legs, I don't really want to handle her because she has very good equipment to defend herself. First of all, she's got her fangs, which is her second resort, really. Um, but mainly what I'm concerned about is she has urticating hairs. Okay, and she decides to flick these hairs that she's doing now. Now those hairs, if they get into your skin or in your eyes, they can actually um, irritate your lungs. Okay, so I'm just enticing her very gently out of her tank here. Okay, here she is. To meet you all. Um, fortunately, tarantulas have something called book lungs. So their lungs are very compact, so they can only run over a very, very short distance. Um, after that, they'll have to catch their breath um, before they start moving again. So thankfully, um, she's quite safe and quite content where she is. Okay, and as you can see, she's probably got about a leg span, would you say, Mr. Ramadan? Probably about six inches. Yeah. I need to measure her, I don't want to upset her too much. At the moment, we're looking at a leg span of roughly 18 centimetres. Okay, and she's about, about two years old. Hmm. When we first got them in, into science, they were tiny, they were like little money spiders, about a centimetre big. Right. Okay, so in this specimen jar here, um, that Mr. Ramadan has kindly prepared. We have the brothers and sisters of the tarantula that you've just seen um, in this jar. Okay? And it's kept in a special chemical to preserve them. Just would like to show you the size and how quickly they grow. Okay? Now at this size here, in this jar, they're probably a few months old already. All right? and that will come from an egg sac, and that egg sac will produce nearly a thousand spiders. Okay? A lot of those will get eaten by birds and other other items, okay, other um, animals, um, but some of them do survive. Okay, they do survive, and they get large very quickly. Just a survival mechanism, because the smaller they are, the more animals can eat them. Then they'll survive, and eventually they'll grow to this size, and then their adult size. So, as Mr. Sharon Lambert was saying, um, there are a lot produced from the egg sac. These ones weren't killed, these ones actually just died naturally. A, a large number of the young spiders will just die off and won't make it to adulthood. Because if all a thousand spiders made it to adulthood, there won't be enough food for all of them. So these naturally just die um, off. You just saw Mr. Sharon Lambert's uh, large spider. Mm -hmm. These are all examples of the arachnid 
families that you find. You find the spiders, the mites, and the scorpions. So these are all arachnids, two body sections, and four pairs of legs. Now we're going to look on um, to the insect, the largest um, group of invertebrates. The insects have three body sections and they have three pairs of legs. And I have some live examples here. First off is the Madagascan hissing cockroach. Now I'm not a big fan of cockroaches, they actually make me feel very ill. And this variety is one of the larger species of cockroach found on the planet and it has a remarkable defense system for when it's scared it releases air out of tiny little holes on the side of its abdomen called spiracles and it sounds like a snake so if I provoke it you should get a hiss okay um, cockroaches are a very interesting group of insects. They're the dustbins of the world. They get rid of all the waste and they usually come out only at night or when it's dark. They have this sensitivity to light and actually dislike being in too brighter environments. So they are what scientists call photophobic. Photo light, phobic dislike. So they don't like bright light. Which is why when you go on holiday to Spain France, or even if you're rummaging around bins here and you see cockroaches, when you lift up whatever you've lifted up and they come off, they run away really quickly. They're not running away because they're scared of you, they run away because they don't like bright light. Looking at another group of insects, we have stick insects. Now these are found in many forest areas. And they have a remarkable adaptation. Because they're a prey animal, because they are eaten by other animals, they have a disguise to resemble a stick or twig. So these will only eat plant, usually privet or bramble. Um, they will live in forest areas. And when they're threatened, they will normally stop and mimic a stick nearby. Or if they feel like they're cornered, as this one's trying to do, they'll roll their tail up to try and resemble a scorpion. So they look like something which could do harm, even though they don't have any venom, they don't have any real defences apart from looking like a twig or curling the tail to resemble a scorpion. Okay. These next ones are locusts. Now as you may have thought earlier, Mr. Sheridan has placed the locust into the spider because locusts are used as a food item for other invertebrates as well as some reptiles. Locusts are a remarkable animal. They live in large groups called a swarm and they feed on plant. One or two is not a problem but when you find you have a swarm of locusts of 500 to 1,000, they can destroy croplands and be a big pest. The locusts, like grasshoppers and crickets, have springy back legs to allow them to jump. And when they come to their last instar, which is what we call the last stage of their body form, they also have these wings fully developed to fly. So this is on an earlier instar, so it's not able to fly at the moment. When it's at its final instar, it has long wings, able to fly, and that's when they can breed. Here we have some large beetle larvae. Now, some insects, like the locust, start off life looking like a mini version of the adult, and then shed their skin and grow bigger and bigger till they're the adult form. The beetles and some other insects have a separate life form. They have this worm-like shape. Caterpillars in um, moths and butterflies, these tough shelled worm-like bodies with little legs for the beetles. And these mealworm will turn into mealworm beetles. They have a very powerful jaw which allows them to chew through wood and they normally burrow into dead plants and eat them. 
Again, these can be used as food items for spiders as well as other reptiles. The next group are very, very, very active, so I'm going to place them in here carefully. These are brown field crickets. They're very fast. They also have the adapted springy legs for jumping. And again, they make good food items for reptiles and the spiders and larger uh, vertebrates and invertebrates. They're a good example of a well-adapted insect. So again, they have the three body sections, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They have three pairs of jointed legs. And uh, when they're adults, they form a wing, which doesn't help them to fly, but instead they rub the wings together to form a cheeping noise to attract a mate. So insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, and three pairs of jointed legs. Okay, so they have a very distinct body form to the spider family, the arachnids. They are the largest group of invertebrates, the largest group of animals on the planet. These can include flies, butterflies, beetles, bees, wasps, all different types of insects. The last group of the invertebrates we're going to look at are the crustaceans. The crustaceans have crusty body forms like the crab, um, like the lobsters, prawns, as well as a land-dwelling crustacean, the woodlouse. And we have here some live shrimp. And you can see they have a hard outer shell. Some types of crustacea have claws at the front. They usually have 10 or more main legs and maybe a few smaller legs around the tail. And we also have some preserved crustacea, including crayfish, prawns, uh, lobster there, and also a king crab. There is one other group of invertebrates which we haven't spoken about, and they're the myropods. They include the centipedes and millipedes, but unfortunately we don't have any specimens of those in the school.